With recent events surrounding the major tech platforms and the censorship of a particular alternative, there has been a surge in interest around other alternative platforms. And today we're going to explore some of those and the distinguishing characteristics of some of these competitors to the major technology platforms. So stick around. Hello, hello, wonderful and amazing people. I am Jay and you're watching DS Tech Media where we cover everything tech from gaming to servers, hardware to software, but specializing in Linux and open source technology. And recently you uh, may have heard a lot of stir and controversy surrounding a website and app called Parlor. And Parlor has been around for a while and it was an alternative to Twitter that was largely embraced by conservative and right-wing Republican users because of tech censorship and perceived bias and targeting of said right-wingers, particularly Trump supporters on Twitter. And I just want to say right now, this video is not about politics or the right or left wing views of anybody. Uh, this is a tech channel and I try to leave that type of thing out as much as I can. However, for me to properly cover this story, I am going to have to make note of certain things like that. So that is why I'm even mentioning it at all. But as you may know, uh, recently after the events of January 6th, Twitter and the other major platforms have banned or suspended now former President Donald Trump, causing him to move to Parler. And subsequently, an estimated 70,000 users were banned from Parler as well, and many left in protest or solidarity with the president. And this caused a massive influx to Parler, and allegedly this brought about the targeting on the platform as a result. Now this isn't the first video I've done on the topic. I did a video a little while ago focusing on Minds.com. And if you click in the top right here, I'll even post a link to that video. I also did a video more recently comparing BitChute and Library. If you want to see that video, I'll leave the link in the top right of this one. So in this video, I'm going to try to expand our look at the alternative tech sites. So back to Parler. The first thing that happened was the Google Play Store started threatening Parler that they needed to begin rigorously censoring some of their content. Eventually, Parler was removed from the Google Play Store. And in a short time later, I believe less than 24 hours, Apple removed Parler from the App Store as well. But an even bigger shock came when Amazon gave Parler 24 hours notice that they would be terminating their hosting of Parler's web infrastructure on Amazon's public cloud, AWS, or Amazon Web Services because they no longer wanted Parler's business either. So Parler had seen the record growth and traffic to their platform as Twitter was removing and losing major swaths of traffic. And this could be easily construed as a coordinated attack on Parler. And we've seen things like this in the past from the major tech players. One major example of this happened several years ago with Gab for much the same reasons and under very similar circumstances. So why does this matter? Well, uh, I live in the United States and in this country we are afforded a First Amendment right to free speech. And an argument against that is often that these are private companies and that they can do what they want. But also at the same time, these private companies are afforded federal protection and privileges under something called Section 230. Section 230 gives them freedom from responsibility for what is posted by their users because they are a platform and not a publisher. Whereas if they were a publisher, they would be curating 
censoring and editing the content on their platform, which technically would make them subject to legal obligations derived from that content. So in this situation, we have a kind of blurry boundary where they are afforded federal protections, meaning they're supposed to be neutral and objective from everything posted to them, as long as it's not illegal. But by choosing to censor and curate certain content, many would argue that they should no longer have their protection under the status of Section 230. Okay, so here are some of the platforms I want to cover today. Let's start with uh, the Twitter alternatives. Parler uh, was the obvious Twitter alternative, and they have actually been removed entirely from AWS. But recently, I've discovered that they are back online and that they have a new host, but you still cannot really use the site. So the next Twitter alternative I'd like to look at is Mastodon. And Mastodon is a lot like Twitter in many ways. One unique thing is that it uses what's called a decentralized and federated model, often referred to as the Fediverse. And this means that there are many instances of Mastodon. However, those instances, though they have their own groupings and users, can communicate between one another in certain cases as well. It, it's a bit confusing. Uh, for instance, I am on mastodon.social but if you go to instances.social we can get a list of various mastodon instances and as you can see there are a lot of them they even have a wizard to help you figure out the best instance for you. You know, you can choose how many users you want your instance to be around. Uh, this re refers to illegal pornographic and nude content, not safe for work content. And this will help you narrow down the various Mastodon instances. Additionally, there are various clients and desktop applications for Mastodon. And of course, there are apps for Mastodon, for iOS, and for Android. Gab is another Twitter-like alternative that has actually expanded a lot over the past year. They now have a pro service called Gab TV. It allows you to upload video to your account. And Gab began mostly as a Twitter alternative, but I think more recently it's become a little bit more of a hybrid between Facebook and Twitter. And when Parler was destroyed, a huge influx of users definitely gone over to Gab. So this is Minds.com. And I would say that Minds.com is solidly a viable alternative to Facebook. I no longer use Facebook personally. And I actually use Minds.com quite a bit. I'm pretty active in the art of video editing group. And I'm also in many Linux and open source technology groups on Minds. I enjoy Minds quite a lot. Uh, Minds also has its own cryptocurrency token that's used to promote your content if you're a content creator and as a way to pay content creators that you like and you receive tokens for anything that you do that is upvoted or shared and as i said before i've done a more extensive video on mines that you can watch if you would like to know more Okay, so now I want to move on to YouTube and Twitter video and streaming alternatives. And we're going to start with streaming. So DLive was the primary streaming alternative to YouTube and Twitch. It became pretty big initially with PewDiePie going to it. And it uses its own currency system with lemons, ice creams, diamonds, ninjaginis, ninjets. And that's all based on their, it's kind of like a 
cryptocurrency called Lino. You buy Lino and then each Lino equals so many of these different things. You can donate them to the streamers and of course you got chats and can follow people and what have you. And uh, for a good while there, everyone was pretty happy about DLive. But since the events of January 6th at the Capitol, DLive 2 has started heavily uh, enforcing censorship on certain people and also since then basically any channel in the political commentary sphere can no longer receive donations through DLive. So DLive could be fine for you. They are definitely not the censorship free platform that they began as. Still plenty of uh, gaming live streams and content can be found there. Uh, but another platform that people have basically mass migrated to is Trovo.Live. And Trovo.Live is very similar to DLive in a lot of ways. And it uses a similar system of monetization for its creators. You turn cash into what is called Elixir and you can donate to the streamers that way. Additionally, they seem to keep videos up for a good while. I know on DLive, the standard was to keep streams up for like three days. It looks like these are staying up a little longer. Okay, so these were actually clips that I saw three weeks and two weeks on and past streams here. The oldest one that is a full stream appears to be six days. Not sure if that's kind of the going length of time or not but Trovo seems to be the new player as far as the uh, streaming services on the block. Next, uh, I want to look at Rockfin. Rockfin is a little bit different. They do video on demand and streaming, but they're focused around monetization. So lots of the creator videos are going to be premium, meaning you need to be a Rockfin premium subscriber in order to view that content. And they also have their own token. I believe it's called RAE, but I think you can deal in uh, your cash currency on there or in their tokens. I think you have the option basically. This is an interesting platform. I'm not a creator on this platform. I have DLive and Trovo accounts, but I really don't stream to them. Uh, Rockfin is promoted by a few channels I follow. Jason Burmis is one of my favorites. He pushes Rockfin very hard. Next up is Rumble. Rumble is basically YouTube. I think minus the streaming. As far as I know, Rumble does not have any streaming capabilities. From what I've seen, it seems to be a lot of uh, right-wing conservative people on Rumble, but it was just a platform I thought I would mention. And next up, we have Library. L-B-R-Y. I'm actually a big fan of this platform. They have library.tv, but the primary way of using library is their app. They also use their own crypto token, which is called Library Coin LBC. Users on library have the option to charge LBC for their videos, or they can make them free and you can simply tip LBC. Additionally, you earn the token for watching videos. They also have the added benefit of syncing with my YouTube channel. Here we have the library app. They also have a library app available for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and also for Linux. You can watch through uh, library.tv or through the app, but more recently they've launched a site called odyssey.com. Odyssey is basically their answer to YouTube. Uh, there are some differences between the way things work on Odyssey versus the app. I think the idea is that they'll eventually add advertising, etc. and so forth. But all of the content is exactly the same. Uh, here is my channel on Odyssey with all of the 
same content that you'll find on the library app and of course there's also bitshoot and bitshoot does not actually have streaming they only have a uh, video on demand it actually does work and function a lot like youtube and they're constantly working to improve it it's a small team that does this site and they claim that they will soon be able to also offer streaming before there was a lot of issues with the search they have since revamped the search and now they also have a very decent mobile app but it is only available for Android. You actually cannot get it on the Google Play Store. You have to sideload the app and it's called BitSlide. There are instructions on how to get it here. The BitSlide app is actually very cool. It works way better than the BitChute apps available in the Google Play Store. Uh, it even allows you to minimize videos to the bottom of the app while you continue to use the app for browsing and what's even cooler is you can completely put the app into the background or even lock your phone and the app will continue to play another important mention is dtube dtube is set up much the same as youtube DTube allows you to upload directly to their platform or reshare your third-party link through BitChute, YouTube, or anywhere else really. And DTube was originally built on the Steemit blockchain and used Steemit currency and had very tight integration with Steemit. Uh, now they actually have their own crypto token which is called DTC but they still integrate with Steemit and also with Hive. The fork from Steemit Steemit and Hive are actually both blogging platforms and I post a lot of content there. Sometimes I'll offer like additional information on my guides and tutorials and things here. And you can earn crypto through Steemit or through Hive. And Hive is actually a fork of Steemit, which is way too much to get into right here. I may explain that in a different video but i actually use hive via something called peak d and it is essentially the same exact platform as steemit except with much better features hive is newer and is more of the community platform and it was actually created after a revolt of a majority of steam its original users all of my posts that i make to hive via peak d will appear on any hive platform of which there are many and they'll also appear on my uh, steam it account so whichever one you would prefer to use you can follow me on either one and there are various apps available for mobile for these and the one that i tend to use is called hive blog it is powered through the pocket net app Okay, so the last category we're going to look at are messengers. So these are going to be alternatives to Facebook's messenger, maybe to Skype and to Discord. So this is Telegram and Telegram is a great alternative to Discord, WhatsApp and others. You can send video and images and all forms of media. There are groups. There's also video and voice chat for groups. And most significantly, Telegram also uses encryption for all of your communications. And the entire system works in the cloud. It was founded by the developer Vitalik Buterin the tech entrepreneur from Russia who has also created the Russian Facebook alternative VK. And more recently, I've seen a lot more people using Telegram, even content creators, as a way to get their content out to their fans and interact with them. And of course, it works on just about any platform, including Linux. Next up, we have Signal. Signal is another messenger that is focused around privacy and security via encryption. It offers video and voice chat, text chat, sharing of media, and of course, uh, group 
sessions for all. Signal has become a uh, popular tool among the various protest movements around the world, such as in Hong Kong and in Portland with Antifa, and also with the Yellow Vest, I believe. The one drawback to Signal is that it does require a phone number in order to to work so that is how you're identified persistently is through your phone number and in order to activate the desktop app on Linux I had to scan a QR code with the signal app in my phone but an additional feature that you get is that signal can act as your SMS text messaging app so it's not all bad but privacy and security enthusiasts have often criticized the use of the phone number as a major drawback with signal uh, according to the company, they do not store any information, not even metadata. So there you have two viable chat and messaging services rather than your discords and your skypes and all the others. So there you have it. Those are some of the major players in the alternative social media and video content game. And I do think that the issue of freedom on the internet is very important. The internet that I'm on today is so much different from the internet I started out on and the internet that I grew up on. Uh, back in the day, the internet was totally the wild, wild west. Uh, there was no centralization of anything. The only thing Google did was help you find things. There was no Gmail. And the first centralization that we actually saw happen was kind of like MySpace. MySpace became the first real social platform. And then once Facebook came about, it was all downhill from there. And we're seeing more and more censorship by major tech companies. So I think it's important that you at least try one of these alternative platforms, whether you're just a user and you want to view videos, or if you are a creator, then you should definitely try to also publish to these platforms and build your community there. Because so long as we let Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and the rest of them have their monopoly on our data and our speech, the more they're going to assume they'll be able to get away with as far as selling our data and censoring our thoughts and what's acceptable anyways which one of these alternative platforms are you using let me know and like i said give me a follow there and if you are watching this on youtube please like share and subscribe let me know which major tech platform you can't live without for me it's probably youtube it's kind of hard for me to leave youtube behind anyways i thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one